Hi, I'm Bob Swinney here with Dodson head football coach Doug Miller. We're going to talk about the upcoming 2018 football season for Dodgeland. Hi, Doug. Hi, Bob. How are you? I'm good. I'm All right. Good. Um, before we get into this season, this upcoming season, why don't you just give a rundown of what happened last season? Well, last year um, we finished second in our conference to Marcus Ann, sort of a repeat story of the couple of years before also. We ended up 6-3. and three. Uh, We lost our opening game to Stevens Point Pacelli, and that was uh, sort of a last-minute deal. It was a great game, and they beat us in the last couple minutes, or last minute or so, but, um, but it was a good game for us. We had good competition. We were able to find some things out about ourselves, and we lost to a really good Pittsville team that uh, had a nice senior class and a good program, and then, and then we lost uh, to Marcus Ann, but uh, we won six. We got ourselves in the playoffs. We we're the number five seed and went over and played Johnson Crick and picked up a playoff win there. Um, got ahead a little bit and uh, they caught up and we held on and uh, that too was a great game. Um, and then we got uh, got beat by St. Mary Springs who was a better football team and uh, you know we had them we had them seven, we were down seven nothing with six minutes ago in the second quarter. Fourth and one on their, on our own 30 yard line. And the quarterback ran a keeper and went 70 yards. And as he went in the end zone, the floodgates sort of opened up and they scored a few more. They scored three more before half. Oh my. You know, and it was all of a sudden it was 35 nothing at half. But they were. You know, they were a first first class team. I think mm -hmm. I think they went on to win it. They did, know, yeah. You know. so. Okay, so how many guys do you have out total for all four grades? We have uh, thirty five right now, with one or two that uh, are just starting to go through some things to to join us. So. Okay, so potentially thirty seven. Potentially. Okay. You know. All right. I mean, how does that number compare with or contrast with the last few years? We're right about the same as we were the last few years, and you know, there's a there's a few kids in school that that we'd like to have out, and you know, and we let them know that they're welcome, and we'd like to have them. But um, uh, that's a recurring refrain. It's tough, you know. Um, you you try to sell what you're doing is good for them, and and that they'd enjoy being with their teammates, and they're capable of doing it. Um, but um, in the end, it's their personal decision, and that's okay. what we can do. How many seniors? We have nine seniors. That's pretty good, isn't it? That's not bad. Yeah. Yeah. And juniors? Juniors, I believe we have seven. Okay. That's not a bad group for That's varsity. a nice mix. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then we're a little lower on the sophomore numbers, and we've got, a, uh, well, we're picking up a, a freshman that's moving back into the, to the district, so we'll be back to 12, 12 freshmen. Hmm. All right. Um, what would you like to talk about first this for this uh, year's team? Whatever you want me to. <laughs> offense. Offense. We like offense. <laughs> let's start. Let's start where it all begins. Yeah. Our offensive line has done, has had a nice off season. Uh, off season meaning what? Yeah, uh, they from last November until this August, um, they have increased their strength in in. A considerable fashion. Okay. So, a lot of them have jumped their bench 60 to 80 pounds. Oh my! Um, they've worked hard, you know, and uh, it's it's got them believing that that great things should happen, and and that's that's where the game. I really believe that's where the game starts with your offensive linemen. Or offense. But the the whole the, the whole game starts with your offensive linemen. If they can, if they play well. You keep the ball, you have field position, and put your defense in a better position. Yeah. Um, I, yeah. It's just uh, um, where, where I believe it, it, it makes the difference. You know. Who do you have at center? We have Kane Smiedema. Kane started last year. Um, he's a little lighter. Lighter than last year? Yeah. yeah. He lost a little. The, he's lean. He's oh. 185 pounds, 190. Um, so he looks looks good. He's lifted hard. Um, he'll he'll have a great season. And and I place a lot of value on a center, you know. And and they've got to be one of my 
top two linemen because somebody's going to put a good nose guard over them and they've got to be able to handle that. And he started for you most of the season last year? Oh, he started the whole, the whole oh, year. Yeah. Okay, yeah. that's good. Yeah. All right, guards? Guards, um, right now, Mason Hill, Hillsman is at right guard. And uh, Mason is one of those kids that really did a great job in the off season and is lifting. And um, and then uh, the other guard, um, Anthony Brueger, returns as the left guard. And I think Anthony, if he didn't start all the games, he started at least the last seven. Mm -hmm. um, but I know he played those first couple games. We just, we might have had a rotation going or something to, to, to look at a couple different kids. But um, so your interior line is all seniors. Interior line seniors. Number 21, and they'll give off a strike off the left side, cutting back, and he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Dodgeland. Uh, we moved Ryan Nye from left tackle to right tackle. And uh, Ryan, as we know, is, is an awfully good athlete, a competitive kid. You know, he's 182, 85 right now, and, uh, and very strong. I mean, so, Why did you make the move? Um, we foresee other schools putting their best defensive linemen on our right, on our offensive right side because I have a tendency to want to run that hole more, and that's where I need to have what I consider my nastiest lineman. That's that's you know, okay. going to do that. Um, last year he played left tackle, but. Uh, you know, there's no doubt he needs to, to go over to right tackle. He'll see some kids that that are combative like he is, and, and we needed his temperament over on that side. Okay. And then left tackle um, right now is Alex Nelson. Uh, Alex is a sophomore, and he's a young sophomore. Um, he's 6'2", 265. Uh, Hillsman's 265. Brueger's 240. Um, and he's had a real nice camp, um, doing, a, doing a nice job. We're sort of waiting for Christian Nunez, who's a, another big, big sophomore. He's got a, a sore small back right now, and we're just giving him some time to stretch out and get healthy and not, not try to hurry him along because we'll need him as we go through the season. So those two kids will, will compete over on that left side. And, um, and then defense, I mean, we're going to be, be needing to use both of them one way or another, so. Okay. As I was going over uh, last year's game in prepare, preparing this video, uh, I always have to take a look at the line and I have to slow down the video and you know, go yep. frame by frame to see exactly what they're doing. I was very impressed. Those guys were juniors last year. Yeah. And they did a really nice job. And I figured, boy, you know, I always think, you know, like you say, the game starts with the line You've got these guys coming back with experience, bigger and stronger. That could really lead them to some good things, couldn't it? We certainly hope so. I mean, and and, and you know, when you know my my previous years somewhere else, I think we valued our offensive line quite a bit and the lifting and the strength. And um, I'd rather have a great offensive line than great anything else, really, because they can make everybody look good. Yeah, sure, do. Okay, good. Where else? Well. Um, our running backs, sort of a neat situation here is we've got two running back positions if you don't really, you know, and the wing back is sort of a running back receiver and three returning starters. Um, Nate Astrike, 1,200 yard kid last year as a sophomore, um, didn't play full time the first two games. He was still competing for the position. Um, from the fort as a strike shoots up the hole again spins past a first down and more and he's and then uh, Dakota Grunberg was our fullback fine here's the give up the middle and I believe that was Dakota Grunenberg 
Pittsville is the run up the middle, a counter to Dakota Greenenberg, and he rumbles downfield for a first down. But the year before, Peter Mountain was our fullback, and Peter had a really good sophomore year. Um, and now Peter's back back into football, and we got some nice backs. I mean, two of them are 210, and the other one's 205, and they've all lifted hard. They've all have have numbers as good as the linemen. Um, they 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 could be they could be a nice group. No, once they got into the second or third level, they ran over people. They're strong runners, yeah, yeah. And, and that was last year. You know, yeah. I mean, we're expecting expecting better things. Yeah, you know, that uh, um, it's a it's a nice situation there. So you're seeing a strike as you're you're going with an eye formation again this year. We're we're running every play that we have out of I and T formation. Okay. And because we've got these experienced backs, I mean, it makes no difference to the linemen if we're running yeah. a off tackle second back through the five mm -hmm. hole, you know, or through the four hole, or it makes no difference to them how we line up. Right. And uh, and but then we can run some plays a little better out of a out of a T, and we can create some problems because it won't be as predictable as having an offset fullback. Mm -hmm. um, gives people two things to scout with and yet we've got these experienced backs that doesn't bother them in the least where they line up. So do you have a quarterback? We have a quarterback. Um, and I've been been anxiously waiting because because uh, I, I think he's gonna gonna really have a nice year and the kid is Ty Bader and he's just he's level-headed he's he's worked hard he's put his time in he gets better every practice he's just he's very conscientious and he's got some talents, you know. I mean, he can do. He throws a nice ball. He he listens. He takes care of the ball well. So I think he's going to give us a, a very nice quarterback that's going to be able to utilize our skill positions and and keep us out of bad stuff. Um, but I, I see him making making some big throws and some big plays. And what grade is he? He's a junior. Okay. So he was your Jury V quarterback last year. Yep, and he was our backup. Yes. Wing back. Wing back, um, two guys that are working there, uh, Seth Christofferson, um, he moved into our district and last year and played about half of the season after they sort of got used to what school was about here. Um, There's three boys in the family and they all came out for football then. And, um, Seth plays point guard on the basketball team. He's, uh, he's a good athlete, he's shifty, he's a tough kid. And then uh, Cameron Nelson. What, what grade is he? He's a junior. And then Cameron Nelson is a junior. Um, Cameron last year had our fastest 100 time in track. Um, he ran a shade over 4 5 in the 40. Um, Cameron does, it brings a lot of things to the table. Cameron will also probably go in the backfield a little bit too, but um, that gives us, gives us two kids that we can look at, but yet either kid could play a tailback, or they could play in that in that split veer set. Um, I think Seth will back up um, Zach Younger at wide receiver. Um, so, okay. good kids. Yeah, and right. then and then Younger is our is our returning wide receiver. Last year we were forced to use him at tight end. Jordan Marsh um, had to miss some games. He got got. Uh, Got hurt a little bit, and um, so Zach moved to tight end. Uh, when Jordan came back with the last two, three games, we were able to, you know, use Jordan on offense, but then also be able to bring Zach from split into a double tight set, and then split him out. Mm -hmm. And um, that gives us, that takes away some of the predictability of always going to a tight end. Um, let's just get some protection backside. Um, so, younger, younger's a good, good target there. When when he did play tight end, he had some very good success just finding the open spot oh, yeah. between the linebackers and the safety slash corner. And there's an open area, and Cody Nails was able to just pop the ball right away. That right. was that looked like a more consistent play for him last year than some of the other things that they did. 
Would you agree with that or disagree with that? Um, he was real good at it, and we you know, we took advantage of it at, at just a shade under six four, and you know, and a smart kid, and we had a decent running game that, you know, we do a little we do a little play action, mm -hmm. and and then let him find the opening, and, yeah. and we worked pretty hard on that in practice to, to try to make eye contact with your quarterback and to get in the, the little pockets that are mm -hmm. that are available, in which, you got to have a kid that that can can do that because that place changes depending on how their defense reacts. Well, he had one of the, the very best high school catches ever last season. It was against Canberra Friesen, was it not? I can't remember. I mean, I've, I've seen quite a few <laughs> out of him. But, uh, well, it, it was yeah. uh, right down to the end zone. It was close to the end zone, uh, headed toward the school end zone. He reached up with his right hand, knocked it oh, down yeah. and brought it in. Brought it in. Yeah. 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 And it really, yeah, it was the, the yeah, it was Canberra Friesland because the radio station was here. And those guys were just going nuts about how that good of a catch that was. Well, here's Nails, here's the pass. Going down the silent over to Zach Younger who makes an unbelievable catch. What a play! Going down the silent over to Zach Younger who makes an unbelievable catch. What a play! Oh my goodness! A one-handed catch! So and he's, he's made some. I mean, we those are the things that that we're real comfortable that we expect him to be able to catch it if he's near him. Um, his sophomore year, he had a, even a nicer one against Palmyra, where he had it turned around and caught it on his hip and oh. never broke stride. And, <laughs> yeah, so, all right. So, who did we forget? Well, we talked about the tight end with Dakota. Mm -hmm. um, Cody. If we want to use Dakota in the backfield, our, our best option is to move Younger to the tight and move Christofferson out to the split. And, and that's one area that we're, we're looking at, um, trying to develop somebody, whether it's one of our linemen, if, if the two sophomores come around, I can afford to slide one of the linemen out to tight end part of the time, or, or somebody just develops for us a little bit. By watching the lineman block preparing for this video, I noticed uh, really good downfield blocking by your ends, by your ch guards when they didn't have anybody on. They got down and they stayed on as you know, much longer than I've seen in the past. Is this something you've been working on a lot? As here's the run, Matt Moynihan with a lead blocker ahead of him. Moynihan's got a lot of space. What a block by Nene Strike and Moynihan walks into the end zone. Touchdown, Dodgeland. Well, my first year, I don't think we emphasized that enough or, or got that point across. And during the off season, I remember talking to Topher Justman about the Partyville kid that just stayed on you, stayed on you, and just, and Topher took that to heart. And now anytime we want somebody to recognize the value of a receiver, we just flip on Huddle and when, when Topher was playing there. and. And it's sort of, it's, it's one of those things that, you know, just like any other position or any other sport, when kids see success and they imitate it, it almost perpetuates repeat mm -hmm. actions year in, year out. But that's where, that's where that sort of started. Um, Topher's senior year, he was he just, Bulldog, really, huh? he was really good. He was, you know, he was all over the place and, and blocking until the whistle blew. Yeah. I noticed uh, really good blocking for a sustained period by by uh, Schmidt last year. Yes. And by Younger last year. Yep. Um, those two guys really stood out there. But there were other guys. Your guards did a really nice job, I thought, going downfield. Yeah. Getting I mean, our linebackers and yep. just staying right with them. Yeah. And that opens up holes that we, for now these, these running backs are in the third level. Right. And, you know, you have to develop the idea with kids that even the the guy on the back side of the play, mm -hmm. when he comes, you know, when we watch our film and he comes yeah. across and makes a tackle right. and our guard was supposed to get out in front of him, mm -hmm. um, and I think that's the value of the film too, is they can they can see that one good hit and then turning and yeah. watching, you know. <laughs> yeah. But uh, to their credit, you know, they take that to heart and they take some pride in what they're doing. And, Okay, is that all the offense? That is our offense. Okay, do you have a defense? We do. 
That's a good thing. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Um, defense, uh, uh, headed by our defense coordinator, Tom Selkert, Juno guy. Um, we should return a good number of kids here. I think offensively, I was trying to think when I wrote that up. But um, we'll start in the secondary on this one. Younger, uh, returns third year at safety. Um, he was all-conference safety his sophomore year. Uh, we put him up more as a tight end last year. Uh, what? Tight end, younger, because he had played tight oh, end uh, and had left, on, yeah, on, for, for all conference. Oh, I but, see what you mean. But I mean, he was in all conference as, as, a, as a sophomore, and mm -hmm. you know, if we would have highlighted him, um, probably could have returned that way. But um, him and Moynihan both played safety, so if you put them both up, they'll steal votes from each other. And, you know, just something you got to look at. But um, he's awfully good back there, covers a lot of ground. And then he's going to have three new guys with him. And, uh, and they've had nice camps, and I think they're, they're good athletes and, and ready to play varsity. But that's, that's the area that we're most concerned about because, you know, if your outside linebacker makes a mistake, your safety and your corner cover for him, and it's a 12-yard gain, and we line up yeah. and we go again. Secondary guys don't have anybody behind them that are on our team, at least. <laughs> <You know? laughs> oh no! <laughs> you know, <laughs> and uh, and so so that's you know it's it's real important that early they understand to keep wide and keep deeper than everybody and force teams to play in front of them. Um, we got Cam Nelson at one corner. And Seth Christofferson at the other. With the clock running, pitch out here to the man in motion. Nice penetration here by the Trojans, and they stop him for a loss. Low snap, deep pass, and intercepted. And then Julian Thull is uh, the other twin safety with Younger. And we're going to come out of a 4-3, a maybe a 3-4, a which is you and I have a 5-2 type look, but, but with those yeah. ends as more wider, because we're wider outside linebackers, because we're facing a lot of teams that will play a spread offense. And so we got to have four secondary guys. we got to have the ability to, to, to do a cover four or, or a matchup, you know, man-to-man. Let's talk about that a little bit. Um, it seemed to me that the last few years, other teams have been throwing against you a lot just because they couldn't run. Yeah. Um, last year, um, maybe some teams did run against you a little bit better. Obviously, Pittsville did. Mm -hmm. But um, that does force you to change your defense a little bit, doesn't it? Because they are throwing against you more. Yeah, and, and how they're throwing you know how they're lining up to throw mm -hmm. is probably the the bigger thing we have to change. Um, a lot of three wideouts in the same side. Three wideouts yeah. or or a twin formation. Yeah. You know, uh, Marcus Ann, um, my second year, they, when we when we lost to them, um, we were in a cover three and they had their wide four and they would just run the two guys up the sideline and then the two inside guys down the hash marks and just look the safety one way and throw the other and right there and then we just we got to emphasize we got to be in a cover four when you know and now Palmyra Eagle does that mm -hmm. kind of stuff um Houston does that kind of stuff so we've had to evolve to what our competition yeah presents you know as, as far as our, just our defensive formation yeah well, last year you had uh two seniors at at uh cornerback that just did an outstanding job. Um, Schmidt was Schmidt, one. Schmidt and Derek Anthal. Anthal, Anthal was, he's unopposing on the team, on, yeah. the, on the field. You just don't notice him, but he's making play after play after play. And he's keeping everything in front of him. Yeah. Even against people that are faster and forcing. So is yeah. you uh, going to have guys like that? Yes. <laughs> well, that's good to hear. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, you know, you always miss those good seniors 
that have done a nice job for you, but it is a game that rotates, and yeah, and these kids these kids are ready to to do their job. I mean, yeah. that's just good. Yeah. So right. and and then Ty Bader's also working back there, and Ty I can use just about anywhere defensively, and and I will, but as a quarterback. Um, I'd rather spot play him for somebody that needs needs mm -hmm. to rest than to get him on the field right away and you know distract him from what, what he's doing offensively a little bit. All right. But but if he has to play a full game, he certainly is capable of, of playing outside linebacker or, or in the secondary. Or How big is he now? Six foot, uh, 170, 75. He's grown quite a bit since his yeah. freshman year. Yeah. 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 Good. All right. So our linebackers, Dakota Grunberg returns as a third-year starter in the middle. Um, looks good. Looks confident. He's talking, saying, you know, work, working with his teammates, and you know, he knows he understands what what's going on. So he's he's very willing to to help a lineman get in in position and stuff. And um, he's he's got good experience. He'll he'll lead that front group. Here's Wild going off the pass, intercepted over the middle to Corey Greenberg. And the quarterback brings him down wild, but what a play! Starting at outside linebacker, if we were starting today, is Mountain on one side and A Strike on the other. Mm. So, and then we've got three men down as a taught or as play, and here's another. Toss to the outside. Proc now is brought down. It's Nate A strike. Three off to the left, and they're going to call the trips on this. As here is Wildy looking off to pass. Pocket breaking down, and he's brought down. Nate A strike, number 44. Kids like, like Ty that can come in. We've got a, a sophomore kid that we, we like, and Dominic Schultz that, that could play. Um, we've got some other kids. Uh, Connor Arndt um, should be ready to help us. That maybe if if those two running backs need a little bit of a little bit of a break, we can we can do that with them. But um, it's it's a uh, it's a nice looking group when they're out there. I mean, okay. uh, defensive line. Um, Ryan Nye was all conference defensive end. Yeah, I can't imagine why. I can. <laughs> Holy cow. Ryan, he was a one-man wrecking crew in some place. Ryan, Ryan has, has a great motor and uh, um, expect big things out of him this year, even more so than last. You know, um, our defensive... Prack now under center for the Hilltoppers and a run up the middle. Nothing doing. Ryan Nye in there, number 52. Here comes motion across again. This is a quarterback keeper again, and he's brought down. Good work from Ryan Nye. He tackles. Uh, Mitchell Crutkin played quite a bit for us last year. Ryan, here's the give up the middle, and enough as he's able to cut around the corner, but still good work by the interior defensive line. <laughs> Shotgun formation for Proc now. Here is the handoff up the middle and a couple yards for Quaid. But, um, then Anthony Brueger and Hillsman. Um, I think we'll use Smeedema at an end. And you got the two big sophomores that, that both can play tackle for us and Nelson and Nunez. So we got a nice group. Uh, we, a little bit of a eye opener last. Last night at practice, uh, Alan Perel just decided to step her up, and I don't know Alan. Alan's, a, Alan's a junior, and uh, um, so he played last quiet, year in the sort of, university. Yeah, he's a lineman. Yeah, he's sort okay. of a quiet kid, and um, he just he had a he had an interesting practice, and he's I don't know five six, two seventy five. Oh my! You know? <laughs> but uh, you know, he could he could give us some added depth and and help. He had a you know he opened our eyes. We'll see tonight. We have our first first day of full contact tonight now. So um, we'll learn a, we'll learn a little bit. But uh, I was I was I was real pleased to see that 
that he raised his level and gave us another kid that we're going to have to look at. Okay. Um, Is that everybody then? Yeah. Special teams. Well, A strike returns as our punter. Younger returns as our long snapper. Those are good things. Ramirez is back deep as a strike gets away a booming punt down just out of bounds. Nicely placed punt. Um, Beta returns as our holder. That's another good thing. We really don't have much of a kicker yet. <laughs> you know, you were spoiled the last three years. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. And, uh, and we got... Uh, we we might we might be able to to get get that back too. We're working on a few things, but <laughs> um, yeah, we were spoiled. I mean, you know, Zach Forden was did a real good job for us. Schmidt really did a nice job for us last year too. And um, but uh, yeah, we've we've worked them a little bit. We may be so you squibbing the ball on kickoffs. And are you scouting the uh, soccer team? <laughs> <laughs> I don't see them much, so. <laughs> yeah. so we're still still work. That's a work in progress right now for us. Um, it, it might be a, a year of going for two, mm. at least for a while. You know, that, okay. so we get one get get one really ready to to mm. do that. I'm bringing my kicking shoes, my stu my my two square toe shoes that I have. I'm bringing ah, those out tonight. Kick straight ahead. Yeah. In line kicker. Just lock your foot and tap and get her through. Yeah. Not that hard. I used to do it. I used to do it. Yeah. <laughs> well, kicking is a hard thing to do. Kicking and throwing. Yeah. All right. You have some return people. Yeah. You know, Moynihan Schmidt did a lot of returning for us last year, but A Strike did as a freshman, and and he was there. They just he didn't get a, he didn't get a lot of balls kicked to him. Um, kick return, I, I, we got a lot of, like, Cam Nelson and A-Strike, um, Seth Christofferson, um, we, we got some kids with speed that, that can, can return kicks. On a couple of shorter kicks from other teams, um, Grunberg was able to get the ball. He yeah. really had a couple nice returns yeah. from that left uh, side where he, he was able to get the ball. Well, he's a baseball player, so it was a clean pickup. Mm -hmm. And then then and he's a running, running back, back, straight line guy. I wasn't yeah. looking to dodge to make people, mm -hmm. but you know, take it right ahead and mm -hmm. find an opening. And yeah, I mean, he's just a heady kid. Yeah. And that's that's the kind of guy we, we sort of put him in that second wave. So mm -hmm. when it squirts by the lineman, right. we've got some kids that have some hands and a little understanding of what to do with the ball. Mm -hmm. um, our punt returners, right now I think I'd, I would put Younger there because he can field the ball so well. And, and You just you have one deep person? That's what we normally do. And we could do, we could do a double if we wanted to. Um, it, it seems as though you have more balls hit the ground if you have just one person back there. You know, we've talked about that one too, and, and you're right because our punters in our league are not very consistent. <laughs> exactly. exactly. You know, so we may we may go two people back just so we can um, we can set up a nicer return with one. But uh, you know, if, um, if the ball hits the ground, then you don't know where it's going. Oh. And if you catch it, at least you got a spot where you can get a few yards. Get anyhow. a few yards. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and that is something we've t we've talked about and I've looked at that, uh, you know, it would be nice if we'd have somebody just punt the ball down the middle <laughs> to catch it, but it, it doesn't doesn't happen very yeah. often. And, you know, like with A-Strike punting, his yards per punt was not up there in the in, in the upper leagues and yet he has a, has a big powerful leg, but we asked him to place it away from people so much last year. We gave up a little yardage. We didn't have anything in the line of return, so. But on the other hand, he had some real nice kicks out of bounds. Right. That's and that's what we're yeah, we're yeah, looking at. Exactly. You know, keep it away from the return man. Keep yep. it on the sideline. Let us yep. let us surround it. And he was very consistent at that. You know, he would, mm -hmm. you know, he would work inside the twenty. So we'd try to land it on about the twelve, mm -hmm. give or take a little little air. He was 
You know, it's normally good. when uh, you have a punter in high school who's trying to place the ball, they tend to go to one side. But it seemed to me he was able to take it either yeah. either side. And that's just a, a big. I would think that'd be very valuable. Yeah, and and it was. You know, you and like I said, you sometimes you give up a little bit of distance on your average. You know, but but, but if you're you really on, stay away from big plays and you pin them in and yeah, if you're on your opponent's forty yard line right, and you're well, punting, then, you know, you're you don't not want it get, in the end yeah, zone. Right. Exactly. So you're gonna have you're gonna give up distance there. Yeah, that's one area I think the pros have sort of let go. They try to hang it up by the yeah. goal line. I often wonder why they don't hang it up by the goal line right in the corner. Yeah. Then they have a couple options. They can mm -hmm. skip out of bounds, or their guy can right. can down it. But yeah. if you put it down the middle, it, it can be fair caught, or it can skip in the end zone. But you don't have that sideline to right to work with. All right. Anything else with uh, that? I think we got her. Okay. Do you have coaches? We do. It's good coaches. Uh, mentioned Tom Selkert, and Tom um, has been defensive coordinator with me. Now this will be his fifth year. Um, Tom does a very nice job, and uh, he's really embraced the position. He spends a lot of time on film. He, he's online doing. You know, he's doing his homework. He's he's really been been a, a a good person for me to have around and being being in that same ballpark age-wise we think alike you know old school is that what you're saying <laughs> it could be yeah i hate to be the only old school guy <laughs> uh, we have uh quinn and derek peeper they um they give us that that exuberance uh, that uh, fun young young guy, um, both have college college experience, and um, you know their dad was a coach. I mean, they 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 love being being involved in the fall and doing do a really good job. Um, both are good in the weight room, uh, and then we picked up a, a fifth guy that's volunteering with us, uh, a gentleman by the name of Paul Scheel, and Paul played for me. Um, in Waterloo in the early 90s was the strongest high school bench kid I've, I've ever had, but probably more importantly, one of the best kids I ever had and one of the best young men. Um, so Paul is here, he's, he's working to get into education, he's student teaching here this year. And um, I think... Uh, so what position did he play or what is he coaching? Paul was an <laughs> offensive lineman. And, uh, um, and he's got a got a very good background on, on lifting programs. Um, high school, he he would go around to, to any competition open to high school kids. And I, you know, he remembers there was one in Dodgeland mm -hmm. back then, mm -hmm. and Paul won every time he went anywhere. Um, he had about a four ten, four fifteen bench. Wow. Yeah. I think his top after school was about 425, or 525. Um, repped over 50 at 225. Oh my. Yeah. So, um, but he's he's kept up with technique and programming, um, and Paul coached our, our throwers in track and field this year. So he's got a chance to get to know the kids, mm -hmm. uh, set up some programs for them. I think he was the big reason um, why we we took a nice jump in the weight room this year. He worked with uh, kids in during summer school time, mm. volunteered a lot of his own time. So, well, good. Never hurts to surround yourself with good people. You no. Know, so you have some teams to play against. Who's your first uh, opponent this year? We play Stevens Point Pacelli uh, here. Okay. Um, they like. The, the evenness of the matchup last year, we did too, and mm -hmm. you want to continue this and come down to ours, and they were like, yeah, you know, this, this was a good game for us. So, so they'll be a good opponent. They got, yep. they got a, some, some very good kids back. I mean, they only graduated some, but so do we, you know, so they run a good program. Uh, Staff-wise, they're good people. Um, next, we play Cambria Friesland, and Jim Bilesma and I go back a long way. That's always... Cambria always puts a good product on the field. 
They were pretty young last year. They were pretty young last year. So you expect a better, oh yeah, much better team this year. Yeah, yeah, yeah they'll be they'll be a good team. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and I'll guarantee you they've worked hard in the off season too. Mm -hmm. So, okay, first uh, conference game. We go over and play at Palmyra Eagle. They made a big step up from the first time they were in the conference to last year. They played a much better game last year. They did. They did. Uh, we fumbled the ball four times to them. Out. <laughs> yeah. You know, that, that contributed, and then we had a, a late field goal block that they returned for a touchdown. So I think we played better than, than how it looked on the scoreboard. But they always have athletes and you know I think if I think they got another another new coach again this year and is this the third and third three years I think so mm -hmm. but I think they're they're a team that you got to look out for because mm -hmm. they, they do have athletes there and, and and they do have athletes that lift and um, you know it, it, they had some they had some nice kids that were underclassmen most of their backfield Quite a bit of their offense was all underclassmen last year. Okay. So that'll be uh, fourth game. We go over and play Marcus Ann. This sounds a lot like the it's last, last week. year's schedule. They didn't rotate it at all last two years. Wow. Yeah. Our mm. conference commissioner decided to run the same schedule four years in a row because we had Palmyra and Parkview coming in, and they thought, well, a consistent schedule, or I don't know if it was an administrator that requested that, but. Mm. Yeah, it's a little, yeah, a little repetitive, yeah. but it doesn't matter when you play anybody anyway. So, so it just goes right down. Then, then we have a non-conference game, which we're going, going up to Pittsville, and then we will. What kind of a team do you expect? This well, year? they're they're well coached, but they were really loaded senior-wise, senior. you know, and um, so they'll be very good. Mm -hmm. Um, and we'll see if they replenish their their supply quite. But but those kids, you know, the quarterback, the head coach's son was their quarterback. Mm -hmm. They had a guard defensive end like nobody we saw all year. He was a block. <laughs> and uh, but you know, yeah. being a wrestling coach and seeing Pittsville, they always just have some guys that are tougher than knots. Yeah, you know, they just that maybe that's just that area of the state or something. I don't know, but it. But well, they've got good competition up there too, right? Right, so and, and they they moved to a different league now last year, mm. but they still there's still Pittsville. Yeah. Um, now I played them back in '91, and it was just, and we were we were snotty and aggressive back then, and they they came down, they stayed at our place, and we played on a Saturday, and it was quite the Donnybrook. <laughs> <laughs> so so they'll be fun to play again, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I think that you've stepped up your non-conference competition from the first year that you were here. Yeah, I, you know, and we should. Yes. Um, not always by design. Sometimes week five, you yeah. take who's there, you know. Um, yeah. So. All right, and after Pittsville? Um, we played Parkview, and then... Hardyville, and then Montello, Princeton, Green Lake. They improved significantly last year from the year before, didn't they? Montello? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But That's now, always such a... You're playing three schools. <laughs> yeah, they, they... Not quite, but almost double our enrollment when you combine them. Yeah. Same with Eustis for Horicon. And, yeah. You know, they're about the same in the upper 300s, and we're at 220-something. Mm -hmm. But um, they have a new head coach now too, and their old head coach and I were, were pretty good friends. But um, it was time for him to retire, and then they brought in somebody new. So we'll see. We didn't, you know, don't know anything about, don't know anything about them. So. But later on in the season, you will. Yeah, and at that point in time, it's, mm -hmm. you know. And then we end up with Horicon Houston. They're a tough team. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they do a good job. They got kids. You know. They got they got a lot of kids that are enthused about playing now. Mm -hmm. You know, and they got a you know, a 
fair chance to win any game they step on the field with. Yeah. All right. So you have some goals? Yeah, we do. <laughs> you want to share any? Sure. <laughs> I mean, we want to win, win our first game. We want to win our last game, and we want to win everything between them. <laughs> yeah. We, uh, team as a whole, right now, um, and we're, we're still looking, we've got about 14 kids that you would say right now are varsity players, and, and that's not quite where we need to be. We've got five or six that, that are working their way up, and if, and if they get to... We get three or four of them to get to where they're productive on the field during crucial varsity time. That'll help our season. You know, if we rely on the 14 that we have, that'll be a long haul. You know, at some point in time, we're going to need need those other kids, mm -hmm. and so we just we got to develop them. We've got a few kids that that. Um, Working on getting themselves eligible. We've got we got a lot of stuff going going on that that could give us those kids. But um, so right right now, um, like what we have, and you know if we can have a good next three weeks, stay healthy and and get a few kids developed, we could have a good season. Yeah, I um, always am concerned about the line, but. This year, you've got those guys coming back who played last year, so I think that'll go a long way. I would think that that would go a long ways to, yeah. you know, helping out that the season there. Most important spot, because they keep everybody else healthy and provide opportunity. You know, people rave about the running backs, but they got to go. They have to have a hole. Yeah. 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 And even even a, a great wide receiver has to have a quarterback who gets time to throw. Mm. And, and yeah. all of that stuff plays on how the, those linemen do. Mm -hmm. And if they get you four and a half yards instead of two and a half on a on an opening play, they can change the way you call plays. And, right. Yeah, I mean, it just all, yeah. it all trickles around. All right, any last words? Just excited to be here. I appreciate... Uh, the opportunity the district has given me to continue coaching, and uh, they've, I've, been, I've enjoyed every second I've, I've been here at Dodson High School, and look forward to some more. Well, good. Uh, good kids, and it's been a lot of fun. Great. Thank you. Thank you.